Good morning, everyone. Welcome. Glad that you're here today. We're getting a little bit of uh, the, the snow coming, but that just means we get the warmth of, of being God's family inside here. So we're, we're so happy to, to have you with us. Uh, I have some announcements before we continue in worship. Uh, today at four o'clock, our uh, triple F group, our, our young adult group, will be meeting. There is no uh, KFC today. Uh, uh, so I know Jenna was not feeling well, and uh, so just want to bring that announcement out. Uh, we will not have uh, KFC today. Uh, we will have our youth group at 6 o'clock, uh, though, tonight, so we'll be still having a, a busy evening with that. Uh, we do have our administrative board tomorrow at 7 o'clock, so those on our board, please mark your calendars for that. And we continue with our Bible study uh, each Wednesday, uh, so we'll be having our Bible study. Uh, to this Wednesday at 7 o'clock in our, our fellowship hall. Uh, next Sunday is uh, not only our, can you believe it, we're going to be having our Thanksgiving Sunday, our Sunday before Thanksgiving, uh, so that's going to be, uh, 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 it's coming so fast, but it's also our Bible Sunday and we have traditionally raised some money to uh, send Bibles to our troops uh, that are, are scattered throughout the world. We're going to continue to do that. So uh, we just want to encourage you, if you would bring, uh, for every $5, we're able to get a Bible over to one of our troops. Many of the troops that come home say what a, what a blessing, what an amazing blessing that Bible is. So we, we want to try to get as many of those over as we can. So again, we're going to be taking that special offering up next Sunday. So we want you to be prepared uh, to bring your gift uh, for that as well. Uh, believe it or not, this Saturday, our outreach class is going to be decorating the church for our Advent and Christmas time. Uh, we'd love to, uh, to have anybody that would like to come. So if you like to put up Christmas decorations and lights and trees and nativity scenes, boy, do we have a day for you. So we invite you to come on out. Uh, that's going to again be this Saturday at 9 o'clock in the morning. Uh, join our outreach class as, uh, as we get ready for our Advent and Christmas season. And in that uh, also flavor, our poinsettia orders are in the bulletin. You can order either the, the pink, red, or white. Uh, you can have it in memory or in honor of somebody. And we're going to be uh, doing that up to the 28th of November. So please make sure you, you get your poinsettia orders in. And as you can see, uh, we have a couple boxes that we put together last Sunday. Uh, we actually have, um, we, on Sunday, we put together 464 boxes. And then we got six more. <laughs> so we have 470 boxes filled for children around the world. And uh, I'm going to invite Sue uh, if you want to uh, say a few words about that. Thank you, Sue. It, it was a great time. We, I think, had 44 folks come out and, and help 
uh, pack boxes. So we, we were a machine. I, I really, uh, Sunday after church, I went home and took a nap, and about 10 minutes in, my ankle just started killing me. And I ended up getting gout in my ankle that day. So Chrissy told me I had to sit down and write the notes. So I don't think I stopped writing from the time we got there to the time all the boxes were filled. But, but everybody did a great job. They were all, you know, we had our youth there. We had our young adult there. We had our kids for Christ there. They all were doing some amazing things as we were packing boxes. And again, it's great to know that these are going to be a, a, a message to children all around the world. And my friends, will you join me as we just pray God's blessings over, over these boxes? <clears throat> Heavenly Father, what a joy it is to be able to proclaim your name. And Jesus, we are so grateful every time we get to put you on display. And even though we might not be in these different countries around the world, we can send these boxes with your love and, and your gospel in them that allows people to, to hear about you, to know the real reason for the Christmas season. Lord, I thank you for all those who came. I thank you for those who contributed. I thank you for everything that went into these boxes, these special gifts. And Lord, we just know that your Holy Spirit is going to bring the right box to the right person, that it's going to be exactly what, what they wanted to have. And Lord, most of all, I thank you for the love that was filled with each item. Our love for them and your love for them as, as they receive these boxes. And Lord, even now, we just, we just claim that, that victory uh, of the message that is going to be in each of these boxes, the message of Christ and his salvation. And, and Lord, we just want every child not only to have a good Christmas, but to have that eternity of, of, of celebrating Christ in their lives as they receive him and accept him into their hearts. So Lord, bless each one of these and bless the children that will receive them. Bless all the workers that will be uh, active in, in getting those boxes to each of these places. And we just pray that your glory would abound, that your name would be exalted and that your gospel would be proclaimed in all the earth. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. My friends, are there any other announcements we need to highlight or make this morning? All right. May we prepare our hearts for worship. My friends, as you see in our bulletin, we have our core call to worship printed there as well as on our screen. I will enter his gates, followed by our call to worship taken from Psalm 112. May we lift our hearts as we experience the presence of God today.
Praise the Lord. Blessed is the man who fears the Lord, who finds great delights in his commands. Even in darkness, light dawns for the upright, for the gracious and compassionate and righteous man. Surely he will never be shaken. A righteous man will be remembered forever. Lord, we do lift your name high and we just pray that you would draw all of us unto you. We know that as we center our hearts in you, Jesus, as we live by the standards of your word, we will know that righteousness that comes from you. We will have those lives that are filled with the blessings from your hand. And we are eternally grateful for the grace that calls us your own. And as we are gathered here, ready our hearts to worship you. May we experience you in a real way this day, Lord, that we would encounter the, 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 the power that is in your name. May we hear of your word that it would transform us to become more like Jesus each and every day. May your spirit empower us to know of that righteousness that comes by your grace. And we worship you in Christ's name. Amen. You may be seated. We are in a time where we count our blessings, as the song reminds us, where we are grateful for each thing that we have from the good hand of God. And as we have been blessed to meet our needs, we also know that, that God always allows us to have more so that we can give. And we have always been faithful in that giving. This has been a church that has been so good in, in lifting up those, those gifts to the Lord. So my friends, as we remember all that God has given to us, may we worship him now in our offering. May we give our gifts and our tithes so that, that he may be glorified. And now as our ushers come, may we give as giving to the Lord. Father, we are indeed grateful for every gift that you bring to our lives. The gift of resources, the gift of grace, the gift of love, the gift of Jesus. And we just want to let him shine in all that we are and do. And as we are blessed, we bring these tithes and offering out of the joy of our hearts to let you know how much we love you. We pray that you would bless each tithe and offering, that it might proclaim your gospel throughout all the world. In Jesus we pray. Amen. My friends, as we remain standing, may we turn in our hymnal to number 205 as we sing our opening hymn of praise, Wonderful Grace of Jesus.
my friends and children to come on down and meet me here in front that we might have that special message for them and for that child that resides in each and every one of us. Good morning everyone. How are you guys doing? couple just beautiful ladies. Good to see everybody. Are you having a good day? You know what's happening outside? It's snowing. Yeah. Did you catch them? Did they need sugar or salt? Okay. They just melt. Yes. Well, you know, it's fun. This is a great time of the year. We get to see all kinds of things and We need a lot of snow for that, don't you? Yeah, Hope, I don't think we're getting quite, but that's coming. That's a coming, huh? Well, I'm going to share with something very special. Do you see this? You know what that is? What is it? That's a, that's a cross, that's right. And this is a cross that was actually hand-carved for me at my very first church. And the man who did this is a man named John. And John became a friend of mine, and, and I loved talking with John. I found out that, that John uh, was, uh, was in the Air Force during World War II, just like my dad was. And, but John, his plane got shot down, 
and he actually got captured by the Japanese and spent most of the war in a prisoner of war camp with, with the Japanese. And it was very bad. In fact, John, to his dying day, could not tell anybody the, the really bad things that happened to him when, when he was at that, that prisoner of war camp. And Sandy. She gets it, huh? Yep. Uh, I, I love when my dog does that too, Molly. So. But John, he, he had a lot of hurt feelings over all the bad things that happened to him. And he really did not like the, the Japanese people for what he did. But John was a Christian. And he had Jesus in his heart. And he knew he had to forgive even the worst stuff that they did. And even though that was hard, what he found out that he was able to do, instead of allowing that anger and that hatred to grow in his heart, he would begin to work with wood. And he would begin to carve things. And as he carved things, he would pray for those people who did such bad things against him. And he told me when he was carving this for me, he wanted me to know that this is a forgiveness cross. Because as he was carving it, he was learning to forgive the people that did so many bad things. Boys and girls, I know that there are mean people out there. And I know that sometimes they say things and they do things to hurt us. And, and sometimes they do it just because they're wrong, not because of anything we do. And it's easy for us to get angry. It's easy for us to want to get them. You what? You're, they tickle you. Whoa. <laughs> well, I think they do that because they love you, Molly. But sometimes we get people doing things because they, they don't like us. And, and it would be easy to want to get back at them, to say something mean or to do something harmful to them. But God reminds us. They say, that's right, Molly. We can say something nice. We can pray for them. And we need to forgive them. And I know it's hard. <laughs> <laughs> Dads can discipline. <laughs> Sometimes I just lose control. <laughs> That's good. But let's remember, you know, we can let God take care of that. And parents, and we can forgive, okay? So let's pray together. Jesus, we love you, and we thank you that you love us, even when we don't always do the right things. And we thank you that we have people who love us, like parents and teachers, who help us and sometimes even discipline us so that we do the right stuff. And when we have people do wrong things to us, I pray, Lord, we won't let the anger take over. We would learn to forgive them. And instead of saying something mean in return or doing something harmful in return, help us to just be loving, do something nice, and, and help them. That way, Jesus, we get to be like you. We love you. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, thank you guys for being up here. Molly, thank you for telling me all those things. And you can go back to your parents, okay? And have a good day. And favorite times here, folks. I, I love <coughs> that we get to do. These children remind of just the, the simple things that, that we can learn and, and have. And, and I think they're, they're great treasures. Uh, I just, I love them. Folks, as we come to our prayer time, we know uh, God loves us like his children. And, and sometimes like that, we get things on our mind that we want to get talking to God, and sometimes we don't always get to hear the things that are on his heart for us. But, but that doesn't matter. He invites us to come, to be in his presence, and just to be surrounded by his love and grace. We have a God, for, hear what I'm saying, we have a God who loves what we are, and it, it matters what we're going through. He wants us to come to him no matter what. And what a joy we can do that together. 
And if you have a joy or concern, a praise or a, a, a prayer, we're going to invite you to, to share that, to, to lift that up, that, uh, that we might come together. And uh, before we do that, I, I just, you know, sometimes we, we see God is working all around us, and, and we don't always get a chance to, to share that. Sometimes we, I, I know like me, I'm wondering, you know, is God really doing things? I, I, I really am not seeing, and then I come and I hear some of the stuff, and, that, and it reminds me he's still at work. So would anybody like to share a testimony of what God has been doing in your life or what you see around? Amen. I'm glad you had that. Thank you. Any others? We had uh, Becca had her birthday this weekend, and we went to the zoo. And uh, I, I got to be—I'm a little kid when it comes to the zoo. I, I just love being there. And if you know the Pittsburgh Zoo, one of the first exhibits are the tigers. That's Becca's favorite. She's always loved the tigers. And this year, like every year we go to the zoo, we're looking at the tigers and then we go around and there's this big glass window. And would you believe as soon as Becca got up to that window, that tiger got up from its rock, came right on over and just sat right there <laughs> and just walked right around. <laughs> I mean, I don't know what she has, but if you ever have a tiger loose, call Becca. <laughs> she'll, she'll tame the tiger. And, and, uh, and my favorite were the, are the river otters. You know, I love watching them. We get there, there's none out. And I'm like, man, here it goes. And then Chris is like, don't worry, look. And there, as soon as we got there, one of the otters came up, was swimming around. We started talking to them. And before we know it, it climbed up the tree, and it was like 20 feet from our faces, just looking at us. <laughs> God is good. You know, even in those things, isn't God good? We are blessed to have those amazing things that God reminds us. Uh, of, of that. And of course, Chrissy got to see her lions, and they were all out, you know, sunning themselves and roaring when she came over. So it, it was a great, great time. I encourage you, go to the zoo. You'll have a great time. Okay, folks, let's, uh, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, we are grateful for the big and small things that you bring into our lives. Whether those are, are safe travels that that allow us to get to our de destinations, or whether it's even just some of the animals that, that we get to experience. We see the wonder of your creative hands. We see the, the imagination you had in, in all of this that you've made. And we know, God, that you are a great God that's not done with us yet. And we give you thanks and praise for all that you have done and all that you have shared with us. And even now we claim all that you will be doing and giving. And we give you praise, O oh Lord. I know sometimes we, we don't always do that, Lord. Sometimes it's good to just take some time to see your hand upon us. Because most of the time, Lord, we're, we're caught up in our own things. We forget about you. We, we kind of push you aside. We end up saying things and doing things that we know are, are not about you. And we know they're hurtful. We call them sin because they can break our relationship with you. But as we sang, your grace is even greater than our sin. Lord Jesus, I thank you for the salvation, for the forgiveness, for the redemption that we have in your name and through your blood. May we look nowhere else. May we not try to figure it out on our own. May we come to the cross and know of the life that we have there. So, Lord, as we now confess our sins before you, whether we're here in church or whether we're at home, we just pray that you would forgive us of our sins once again and allow your spirit to empower us to live that righteous life of, of honoring you. And, Lord, we thank you that you're always there to hear what's on our hearts and what's on our minds. We know it's been difficult days throughout these past couple years. We know there's been a lot of people hurting and, and, and lost. And Lord, I, I just want to pray for all those who don't know you. I just pray, Jesus, that, that you would be put on display, that people might see and experience the realness of, of your presence, to hear the, the truth of your gospel. And for those who are lost in the bondage of sin in this world, may they find that freedom and salvation that is in you alone, Jesus. And we thank you for all those who continue to, to, to serve us. Lord, we pray for them every Sunday. 
We pray for our doctors and nurses and staff in hospitals and offices. We pray for our teachers and staff and our students in our schools. We lift up those who are our, our caregivers and our counselors, for our EMTs and ambulance drivers, our police and fire departments, and our, our military personnel as they continue to put their lives on the line. We pray for our leaders, whether they're in our federal government, state governments, or, or in our local communities. We, we pray for those who, who guide us and, and, and look for our best. We pray for all those who are in need, Lord, and we ask you to be with them, whether they're folks that are struggling with COVID or whether they're having heart disease or cancer or, or, or ailments of, of any kind. We pray for those who are in the hospital and those who are sick that, that you would bring healing. I lift up Jenna today, Lord, and pray for, for her healing. And Lord, we, we thank you for those who are recovering. And, and, and I thank you for allowing uh, Jennifer to have her surgery go well. And we, we just lift her before you. And God, we want to remember those that are on our prayer list. We pray for Marge Riley and Kevin Houghton. Lord, as Kevin is, is uh, in this rehab, we just pray that you would bless him and, and help this plate. We'll, we'll be able to, to, to really help him along. We lift up Paulette Loveridge and Arlene Thomas, for Julie Dang and Trine Nunging, for Michelle Tung Dong and for Karen Pondle, for Bob Barrett and Tom Sugars, Lee Berkeybaugh and Tiffany Hayes, Stephanie New and Tom Sugars. We pray for the Warwick's May family uh, as they lost a loved one. And Lord, we, we thank you for, for all that you bring as we bring it to you. And we now lift up these names before you this morning. Mm -hmm. Jen, Jen Woods recovering from COVID. Mm -hmm. Barbara Felix recovering from heart surgery. Mm -hmm. Father, we bring these names forth with the confidence of knowing that you hear and answer our prayers. And you know our hearts, Lord. And we just allow you to be the Lord of all as we worship you. For we ask all these things in the wondrous name of Jesus our Lord, even as we now pray together the prayer that he taught us by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. invite you to remain seated as we share in our hymn of preparation number 38, Grace Greater Than Our Sin.
friends, our scripture for today is taken out of Paul's letter to the Romans, chapter 12, starting in verse 9 and going through 21. That's a great passage in the Bible that reminds us of, of what it means to, excuse me, to be the, the body of Christ. What it means to, to join together, not only in that unity, but in a unity that is centered in the love that, that God has for each and every one of us. That love is, is to be the focus of all that we are and do. And it reminds us in our, our scripture lesson here today that even entails when, when we're facing some things that are, are not necessarily fair or just in, in our lives. So may we hear these words again in Romans chapter 12, starting in verse 9 and going through verse 21. Love must be sincere. Hate what is evil. Cling to what is good. Be devoted to one another in brotherly love. Honor one another above yourselves. Never be lacking in zeal, but keep your spiritual fervor, serving the Lord. Be joyful in hope, patient in affliction, faithful in prayer. Share with God's people who are in need. Practice hospitality. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Mourn with those who mourn. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be proud, but be willing to associate with people of low positions. Do not be conceited. Do not repay anyone evil for evil. Be careful to do what is right in the eyes of everybody. If it is possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. Do not take revenge, my friends, but leave room for God's wrath. For it is written, it is mine to avenge. I will repay, says the Lord. On the contrary, if, you're, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him something to drink. In doing this, you will heap burning coals on his head. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. Those are some powerful words, aren't there, folks? We could spend a long time looking at each one of them. But Paul is reminding us that when we live in faith, it's a real life. It's something that we do more than think about or believe in or, or even preach about. It's something that we make happen every moment of every day. Faith is not something that we decide whether or not we're going to have. Faith is something that becomes who we are. It's more than what we believe, it's what we live. And as a people of God, that, that means that not only do we gather together with folks and we, we worship God and we praise God, but it also means we live in a real world. A real world where our real God is, is doing real changes. We're meeting people at their worst. As the, the parables in, in, in Luke 15 remind us, we, 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 we see that everyone matters. And we look at those dark and dirty places of the world where we'll find those gems of souls that are ready to come to Christ. That's not easy. Sometimes it's pretty painful. Sometimes it's, it's a bad Sometimes we're in the midst of spiritual warfare. And sometimes we see a lot of the result of <coughs> sin that has captured this fallen world. And we experience the hurts and the injustice and the evil that is around us and sometimes even coming to us. And God reminds us that we still allow that faith to be alive. When I was in Jamaica, one of my first trips, we were at uh, Port Antonio, at the market there. And um, I had a group of folks, most of them had not been to Jamaica before, and we were at the market, and I told them, you know, this is the market where you barter, so, you know, don't be afraid to, uh, you know, argue back and forth about the prices. They are always, and I say, a good rule of thumb, whatever they say, go about in half, and then you'll get to the middle where, and if you like it, you buy it. If it's okay, that's the price you want, you're good with that. It doesn't matter what you pay as long as you're happy with it. Um, so I let them know to market, you know, stay together. They're going to be very, you know, aggressive in trying to sell you things. So, uh, um, you know, be careful what you say and what you do. So we're towards the end of the market. And the cardinal rule is don't call out anybody's name on your team. 
when they do that, every person, oh, come on over, you know. And sure enough, we're about ready to leave, and one of the, the young people on my team say, hey, Pastor Don, look at this. It's a duck carved out of wood. I'm like, oh, no. Oh, Mr. Don, Mr. Don, come, 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 come to me, you know. And so here I am. I'm with a guy that I know. His name's Sorry Charlie. Sorry Charlie because all his prices are so low, everybody's sorry that they go to anybody else. So I'm with Sorry Charlie, and, and you know, all the, the team members know I like Donald Duck. And here's a wood carving of a duck. Now, this thing is about two and a half feet wide and about, you know, a foot tall. It's ugly. I mean, it is ugly. I don't want this thing. But, of course, now I'm engaged, so I do what, what I, I know will, will really, you know, push him away. He, he says, I give it to you for 15000 Now, remember, Jamaica at this time, 700 Jamaican dollars was worth like $1. So this was almost, you know, 70 to $80, something like that. And I'm like, oh, no, no, sorry, Charlie. I said, I, I, I give you 500 you know, which would have been less than five dollars. You know, oh no, man, I can't do that. I got family to feed. I said, no, nope, that's all I got. That's all I'm going to give you. I figured he'd say no, no, and I could just walk away. You know, with my dignity and my honor and his respect, and and we argue and argue, and I don't budge at all. Which again is not something you do in those times. He finally says, okay, Mr. Don, for you, I give it to you five dollars or five hundred dollars. I go, oh no. You know, what am I, how am I going to get this thing home? What am I going to do with it? And as soon as he said it, I knew I was stuck. I had to pay it. And as soon as he looked at me and I pulled the money out, he says, no repay, no repay, mom, no repay. And I'm thinking, oh, this is really bad when the guy says there's no refunds. You know? As a no repay means no refund. You can't take it back. You can't get, you know, you got to take it. I still have that duck in my cellar but, but you know, know sometimes, sometimes I, I, I think, think those words are, are good for us. No repay. No repay. You know, we, we live in a world where, especially today, and, and I've seen it, I know you've seen it, we, we see and we hear a lot of hurtful things being said. A lot of, let's be honest, a lot of evil decisions being made. A lot of people being harmed. By what's said and done. We, we, we have seen some of the worst of humanity where they've allowed greed and power and control to take over caring for one another. I was with my young adult group and I, I shared with them when we were growing up, we, were, we grew up with the premise that what really mattered is helping other people. So everything you became, everything you did, all your decisions was how it was going to help other people. You know, we learned to do things like hold doors for our folks, you know. We, we learned to say thank you and please and give respect to, to those in authority. And I said today, today it seems like we've taken that out and what we're centering all our young people's decision making on is intimidation. If you can intimidate people, you can win the day. And that means we open the door for a lot of really hurtful things to come our ways when we begin to see everybody else as an enemy and everything that we're about as a battle. And I've seen a lot of people, church people, people in our world, leaders, look to get revenge for things. Look to pay back for the harm that has come or for decisions that were made. Look to, to repay evil with evil. And honestly, folks, I think we have that too, don't we? I mean, let's be honest. We, we've had some hard times. We've had some difficult times, yes. We've also had some hurtful times, haven't we? This, this pandemic has brought out some of the most frustrating parts of our lives. And I know I've been on both sides of saying and receiving some hurtful things being said and done and, 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 and dealing with the, the frustration and the anger that, that it can bring when, when we are harmed. 
And I hear so many of us watching the news and just talking about the injustice that is going on, the hurt that we are doing to people, the people just wanting to, to, to you know, feed that hate and that division and, and that anger that seems to permeate so much of our world. And we're being challenged on what we do. What happens when we experience injustice? What happens when somebody harms us? What happens when we are wounded? What is our faith going to be? Sometimes it's hard not to repay, isn't it? It's where we come back to a word like this, where Paul is acknowledging that that, that does happen. He acknowledges that all of us are human and, and, and we have a response to when hurtful things come our way. And I love the first thing that Paul reminds us of as we live in this world, we have to acknowledge what's going to be the center of our lives. And as we make Jesus that center, we know that we make love the center of our lives, don't we? That needs to be our focus. That needs to be what we're about. That needs to be central in our decision making. No matter what the circumstances around us, no, what, no matter what people have said or done, our call is to express that love that Jesus has for us. That's why he says, he begins by saying, love must be sincere. What that means is it needs to be not only real, but it needs to be alive. It needs to be that which is at the center of all we do and all we say, all that we decide upon and all that we, we center on in our living and doing. Love must be so real that it's not something that we think about whether or not we're going to do it. It's a natural part of us because Jesus is in our lives. Jesus never thought about doing love. He is love. God is love. Isn't that what the Bible tells us in John? All through the Gospels and the epistles of John, we hear that God is love. He doesn't have to decide whether he's going to love or not. It automatically happens because that's what he is. And as we have him living inside of us, that love becomes a real, natural part of what we do. And when it comes in conflict with the hurt that we have been feeling or the, the injustice that we see in our world, we need to let love trump all those other things. You know, look at all, listen, remember all those things he talked about? Hate what is evil, cling to what is good, be devoted, honor one another, never lacking in zeal, you know, be joyful in hope, patient in affliction, share with one another, practice hospitality. Those are all fruits of somebody who loves. When we love, we lead a righteous life. When we love, we become righteous people. When we love, we see that at the center. That story about John who, who made that cross, it continues to resonate. If anyone had a right to hate a, pers a, a, a group of people, it was him. I know the atrocities that he went through. I know the hurt and the pain. So devastating that he couldn't even tell his wife about them. He had a right to hate. But he had a greater responsibility to love. And boy, if he could love those people who did so much harmful things to him. Isn't that reflecting of Jesus? What held him on the cross to be able to say, Father, forgive them. After everything they did. Righteousness? Justice? No, that would have demanded punishment, wouldn't it? But when he faced all that pain, all that humiliation, all that rejection, and he still said, Father, forgive them. Because he was centered in love. Doing what is right. Not being focused on the wrong that has happened to us. And folks, when we have those things happen, love allows us to forgive first and foremost, doesn't it? I have found that most of the people who are, are, are angry and, and want to get back and, and want revenge and want justice to come, it, uh, every one of them have a hard time forgiving the people who did something. 
we need to do that. That needs to be the first thing that comes. When somebody says something to us, when somebody does something to us that is harmful, we must not center on the wrong. We need to center on the forgiveness and let go of that wrong. You know, Paul says, don't get revenge. Don't repay evil with evil. You know, have patience in affliction. Stand up for what's right. Don't let the wrong bring you down. Let your right bring them up. And we're going to have it, folks. And we've all, I think, faced these things. And it's just not evil people out in the world. You know, anybody who has been frustrated, anybody who has been, you know, caught up in the fears and worries of our day, you know, that, it's easy to allow those fruits of fears and, and frustration come out in the words we say and the things we do, even in church people. And it, we can. We have felt it. We have felt folks that have disagreed with us at the point where it, it's gotten hostile. We have seen people who have different ideas and, and our world today tells us that they must be our enemy if they can't agree with us. You see, when we center on myself, everybody else is, is an opponent then. When I make me the center of my life, everybody else is against me. And when we let that happen, we allow those words and those actions to take hold and, and, and we give the devil a foothold. We allow them to plant seeds of anger and frustrations in our lives. And pretty soon we think they deserve to get something. Folks, that's not what Jesus is about. Hey, I know it. But when we come to those places, if we allow those, those seeds <coughs> of, of revenge and anger and frustrations to take hold of us, it, it, it's a miserable life, isn't it? It's a miserable life. God doesn't want that. God doesn't want our lives to be set in misery and frustration and anger and hatred. He wants us to know peace and joy and hope and love. And it begins with forgiveness. I wish I could tell you we're going to live in a world where everybody will be nice to us, everybody will say good things, and everybody will see I but you know that's not that's not reality. And we need to be in those dark, dirty places because there are those gems of souls <coughs> that we too need to allow to come to Jesus. And it's going to be hard. No repay. No repay. And instead, we give it over to God. <laughs> Can I be honest with you folks? Every one of us are wired to have justice be a part of our lives. And that's a good thing. Every one of us is wired to, to, to see right things happen and wrong things be taken care of. And even though you and I are not to judge those things, even though you and I are not to, to bring the punishment, we are not the judge and we are not the jury of eternity. It is not our job to lay down the punishment and, and, the, and the verdict of people's lives. That's God's, isn't it? And we leave it to God. But there's a sense in us that we want right to be honored and we want wrong to be dealt with. That's a godly thing. It's a godly thing. That gives us our passion to go out and make the wrongs right. That gives us the passion to help the needy. That gives us the passion to make a difference for the lost and the least that, that the world puts under. That gives us the drive to, to see that the kingdom of God comes upon this earth. But we let that verdict and that punishment be God's. He says, do not take revenge, but let God handle it. And I gotta be honest with you folks, I'm good about that. <laughs> you know, there is some injustice, there is some evil in this world that I know God's gonna take care of. And I'm glad about it. That doesn't mean I hate the people, but I hate what's being done. I hate the effect that it's having. I hate that we're pushing God aside. And someday, every person is going to give account face to face to Jesus. 
and they got to give a reason for the wrongs that they've done. They got to give a reason for the, the, the hateful words that they have said. They got to give a reason for the harmful things that they have done. And I'm okay letting them deal with that with Jesus because I know he will bring right. I know this sounds harsh, folks, but remember, every aspect of reconciliation and of salvation has a punishment for evil. Our salvation came through what? A cross. An instrument of punishment to evil. The world, if you read in Revelation, is going to face fire and floods and famine as a, as a punishment for the natural and social orders that we've allowed evil to be a part of. Every part of reconciliation and salvation brings an accountability and a cost to the evil to be dealt with. And we know at the end, God's going to deal with it all. We pray for grace for those folks. We pray for forgiveness for those folks. We pray that they might see what this lifestyle is and let it go. Whether it's a lifestyle of evil, whether it's a lifestyle of unforgiveness, whether it's a lifestyle of living the hurt, whatever it is, we pray that God's spirit would let them go because every word, every deed, every decision will be held in account to the King of Kings. And he will deal he will deal with every injustice. He will deal with every hatred. He will deal with every sin, every evil. He will deal with it. We don't want that, folks. I know it's easy to get hurt. I know today our skins get very thin now, don't they? <laughs> I know sometimes our hearts are too willing to, to accept the, heart, the hurtful things that we hear. But folks, we need to center it in love. If we make that love sincere, those things will not grab hold of us. If we focus on loving God and loving one another, it doesn't matter what is said or what is done to us. And even though we see a lot of injustice in our world today, I just, even last night, I heard on, on the news there's a, a leader of the, the Black Lives Matter who just said to the newly elected you know, governor of New York, if you try to stop crime, there's going to be bloodshed on the street. Folks, that, that, that's evil. That's just pure evil. We need to pray for those people. There's going to be a lot of people harmed when we have that kind of hatred being, being spewed out. God's going to take that. He's going to remain faithful. He will deal with every act of injustice and hatred. We, we can have the freedom of not you know, having that in our hearts. We can have the freedom of not having that in our lives. We know that we are loved, we are accepted, and we are forgiven. And forgiveness is always there for everyone. Let's pray for those. Let's pray for those who are missing out. Let's pray for those who hate. Let's pray for those who are, are causing injustice. Let's pray for those who are intentionally hurt. And we be confident that God will take care of it all. Let's pray together. Lord, sometimes it's hard. It's hard when we get so many hurtful things coming our way. It's hard when we so many people get hurt because of injustice. But Lord, we know you're still on the throne. We know you will bring to account every word, every decision, every action. We know that wherever there is hatred, wherever there is evil, wherever there is, is, is hurt, you are still there. And I pray, first of all, Lord, that you would let love be the center of our lives. We live in a world world, and it's fallen. We live in the midst of people who do cause harm, and, and it, it hurts when we're at the center of that. But Lord, when we're centered on love, we can let go of those things. We can love even those who, who hate us. We can do good to those who bring evil. We can repay evil with good. And we can shine for you, Jesus. 
Lord, help, help those who are going through that. Allow forgiveness to come first quickly and fully. Allow us to let go of those things that we're holding on to that bring the seeds of revenge and, 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 and anger in our lives. Help us to forgive those who have done it to us. And I pray for those who are doing this, Lord, that you would share with them and open their hearts to the evil that is going on, that they may repent of their sins and come to you because we all are going to stand in judgment before you. We all stand face to face and give account to you, God. And I don't want to be with those people who are not going to be, who have to deal with their, their wrongdoings. So Lord, help us to give it to you and live in that freedom that only comes in Jesus. For it's in your name we pray. Amen. My friends, our final hymn is number 477. May we stand as we sing together. Make me a blessing. Out in the highways and byways of life, many are weary and sad. Carry the sunshine where darkness is rife, making the sorrowing glad. Make me a blessing, make me a blessing out of my life. May Jesus shine. Make me a blessing, O Savior, I pray. Make me a blessing to someone One today, given to you in your need, love as the Master loved you. Be to the helpless a helper indeed, unto your mission be true. Make me a blessing, make me a blessing out of my life. May Jesus shine. May be a blessing, O oh, Savior, I pray. Make me a blessing to someone today. Folks, may we be that blessing to folks. Where there is anger, May we show love. Where there is hatred, may we, may we bring goodness. Where there are folks that are caught in the bondage of repent, re revenge, may we share that love that frees them. And may our hearts be centered in that love that is severe, in hope and in joy and in patience. Amen.